people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome back to another Five Nights at Freddy's Game Theory Reaction video. I'll be honest, I had no clue that MadPat was going to put out another FNAF Game Theory before the release of FNAF Security Breach. But it seems like this video may be just kind of a bit of a, a catch-up video. Because if you missed it, on his other channel, GT Live, I believe him and Stephanie took a look at some of the new... Uh, teasers that were released on Doggo's charity stream for Security Breach. And based off the name for the new episode 3, New FNAF Security Breach Theories, and also based off the thumbnail, I'm guessing he's just gonna be speculating in this video about what's going on with Glamrock Chica in the sewers, what's going on with the hand at the end, at the end of the gameplay trailer, and I guess overall just other theories about what could happen in the game before the release. But I have no clue, so let's not waste any more time. Honestly, boys, let's just hop right into it. Of course, if you are brand new, thanks so much for clicking on the video. Subscribe, hit the like button, and leave your theories for Security Breach in the comments down below. Just because we have this game theory going up today, that doesn't mean I'm not going to post day one of Security Breach Week. Today, if you don't know what SB Week is, basically I have nine videos that I'll be putting out on FNAF Security Breach every single day leading up to the second tech demo. Today's video is coming out and it's going to be about Gregory's wristwatch. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe. Alright ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, this is Game Theory. Three new FNAF Security Breach theories. If you're new, subscribe, hit the like button, ladies and, gentlemen, and let's today hop we're into kicking it. kicking off Game Theory's 10th anniversary month. Oh, yes. Yes, I am, uh, I am that old. April 18th will officially mark 10 years since the first episode of Game Theory was uploaded. For context, Congrats. my debut was the same year that everyone fell in love with a Pop-Tart cat flying <laughs> through space, and Rebecca Black's Friday was the most watched video on YouTube. Yikes. Yet we still call them the good old days. Anyway, to celebrate good the channel days. being older than dirt, all month long we'll be doing special events, like remastering an old theory or two, giving you a behind-the-scenes look at what it actually takes to do these things in 2021, and capping it all off with a live stream celebration on April 30th to thank you guys That's for awesome. an unreal decade of overanalysis. There's also a commemorative 10th anniversary Whoa. gold foil shirt filled with easter eggs from the past 10 years Purple of episodes gay. if you want to celebrate alongside us. That's available right now below this video <laughs> and only until the end of the month, so if you're interested, grab it before it's gone. As for today's episode, awesome. well, it wouldn't be an anniversary of this channel without an episode about FNAF. And what better way to cover our longest running series than doing it rewind Sheesh. style? <laughs> That's how not, not that rewind. I'm talking about editing it and all the styles that we've had across the 10 years of this channel. So without further Aww. ado, let's talk about new developments in FNAF in game theory styles through the ages. That's cute. I love that. Wow, this is mad nostalgia. Wow. Wow. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. Game wow. tangential learning experience. In the past few months, we've gotten a lot of new FNAF content. A gameplay trailer for Security Breach dropped, two new books that I haven't talked about yet, and there was oh even a bunch of images from the game revealed as part of a charity stream. And sometimes, Stocko. dear Webiverse, you have ideas. Random <laughs> this thoughts is that insane. are floating around your head, but not enough <laughs> to make love a full this. theory out of. Maybe enough for a game hypothesis, perhaps, but not so much for a fully-fledged theory. Theory. So today I'm gonna nab this those little great. theory nuggets hovering around my head and Nugget. serve them up on a delicious platter for you to munch on. In true Fazbear Frights fashion, I'm gonna present to you three mini theories covering the upcoming yeah. security breach, so, the twists I expect that we'll see in the game, and where the thoughts. franchise okay. might be headed next. Because I think the information is starting to leak out. With delays in this new game causing it to lag behind, I think other parts of the franchise, especially the books, are starting to surge ahead. And well, yeah, that's no surprise. Give us clues as to life after the breach. So without any further ado, hop aboard, friendos, because this <laughs> theory train is about to leave the station. Woo! Woo! Wow. Theory number one, the Glamrocks are secretly toy animatronics. Recently, my good friend Doggo oh, held a 24 hour charity stream theory. benefiting the World Wildlife Fund, which, first off, congratulations to him to reaching his goal. The reason I bring the stream up here, though, is that as Doggo crossed different donation milestone goals, he was able to unlock screenshots What's from the upcoming guys? security breach Oof. game, which, by the end, amounted to 20 images in total. And while Sheesh. most of them are just better angles of places that we saw in the recent gameplay trailer, yeah. there were a few that had details that really stood out. 
out. First was confirmation that Bonnie, Bonnie. appears to be in the game in the form of yeah. Bonnie Bowl. Whether Bonnie is physically in the game or if this is wow. just an Easter egg reference is unclear, wow. but it's a huge detail um, because up the to nostalgia. this point, Bonnie has been absent from all the imagery of the glam rock and I'm sorry for talking so much, but I love the this. the newcomer Montgomery Gator. It had led everyone, <sighs> myself included, to think that the game was just pulling a sister location where, if you'll remember, Chica was actually absent from the fun the lineup, replaced by new characters like Baby and Ballora. But nope, Bonnie is here at the Pizzaplex, if not physically, then at the very least from a lore perspective, <laughs> leaving the only missing face from the core four to be Foxy. Not and quite we'll get true. Back to that in a minute. Oh, okay, Other interesting good. shots included a view from what appears to be inside of Montgomery Gator's mouth. And while this certainly could be a walkway to a different part of his Gator Golf section of the restaurant, considering we see decorative heads on the walls and different mm -hmm. photos from the stream, the view from inside this mouth just doesn't line up for me. It feels it too high up to be a walkway, too closed of a mouth to have humans walking through it like they'd be walking through a golf course. Instead, and admittedly this is a bit of a long shot, could this be an indication that we're actually going to be riding inside of Monty so. at some point in this game? It might seem outlandish, but it actually fits with what's already been leaked out. I want to come title. back to in this. In case you weren't aware, Funko Pop leaked out this statue of security. Because I don't think that's right. character Gregory hiding Because there's a walkway leading up to the head. Freddy, indicating that at least so. one of the animatronics, Freddy himself, will be working <laughs> alongside us to survive against Vanny the Killer Rabbit. So yeah. why not the other animatronics too? Looking at the characters side by side, we see that both Freddy and Monty seem to have a similar build and the same flip open chest True. cavity. And consider this, we're stuck in the pizza plex, meaning that we'll presumably need ways to unlock different sections as the night goes on. Maybe one way to do that is by unlocking new abilities Oosh. from the animatronics themselves. So he does we in the trailer. In the gameplay trailer that Monty is able to break through locked chain link fences. Maybe instead of him using that ability to chase us, it's us inside of him using it to access new parts of the park. I'm kind of iffy like on this, except, you know, animatronic murder themed. Like I said, bit of a long shot, but <laughs> admittedly it'd be a pretty interesting gameplay mechanic that kind of aligns with stuff that we think we know about this new title, so just saying. However, the biggest reveal came with the last picture, where we see Amen. a shattered version of Glamrock Chica abandoned in what's labeled the sewer. And while that alone alludes to some darker sections of the game, it's how she's dismantled that I wanted to call attention to. Chica has no beak. And as anyone who's been on right. this six-year ride right. alongside me might remember, Chica missing her beak in this series is a big deal. Way back in the days of FNAF 4, Scott went out of his way to draw our attention Why to Why would the tiny Chica toy Chica in the minigame so be missing their beak? I don't know where Scott emailed me saying clue. During the minigames in FNAF 4, why would the tiny toy Chica be missing her beak? Oh my gosh, and even in the asset, you see Chica's beak lying Man, on the Man, back ground. when wow, Scott used so to, like, help us out with theories. That one. Oh, that was such a cool stream and such a cool day. Anyway, the missing beak is a reference to two things. In FNAF 4, there's a tiny toy Chica with a beak that's lying on the ground, which itself is a reference to way back in FNAF 2, where the new version of Chica at the time, dubbed Toy <laughs> Chica, would lose her beak when she went on the attack. So to see Glamrock right. Chica here missing her beak seems to be Scott and Steel Wool suggesting that she is none other than a reskinned version of the toy animatronic dating back to FNAF 2. And while that might seem like a leap in logic, the closer little, you look, the more this seems to be the case. Look at the similarities in the face shape, eye size, and hair feathers between Toy Chica and Glamrock Chica. Same round head, same slimmer body shape. Heck, if we're truly getting old school with it, let's count fingers and toes. No! Four fingers and three toes on Glamrock Chica, just like the four fingers and three toes on Toy Chica, which, mind you, is not the same as every other iteration of Chica. Even the material that she's made out of appears to be the and... same, that hardened, glossy outer shell Maybe. that would crack and shatter rather than rip or tear or mold like you see with the other old versions of the animatronics. Want even more proof? Remember how I said that Foxy isn't present in this game yet? Well, you know the only animatronic without a toy version? Foxy. It was true in FNAF 2, no toy Foxy. It was true in the FNAF 4 mini game. Bonnie, Chica, Freddy, but no Foxy. And here again, if these are indeed reskinned toy animatronics, there's no toy Foxy. Follow mm. the missing Foxy, my friends. Follow the Foxy. Now, why would this matter? Well, it actually I matters a lot. If you can remember back that far, the toy animatronics are actually <laughs> meant to be friendlies to children. You don't have to take my word for it. Let's listen to another blast from the past explaining it. Guy. A small fortune on these new animatronics. Facial recognition, advanced, advanced mobility, mobility. They're all tied into some kind of criminal database, so they can detect a mile, a, away. a mile away. Someone mile may away. have tampered with their facial recognition systems. The characters have been acting very unusual, almost kind of sussy. The they interact with 
the kids just fine, but when they encounter an adult, they just stare. They interact with kids just fine. The reason they attack us in the game is that we're an adult, a security guard that looks an awful lot like William Adams. But gay. kids are fine. Again, if Security Breach is all about animatronics helping Gregory against the threat of Vanny, this makes perfect lore sense. Gregory is a kid. The Maybe. toy animatronics are designed I'm to kinda protect iffy on it. I don't... kids. Coincidence? I think not. Between the visual similarities, said the missing Foxy, and the lore connection... You got me, Matt Pat. You said it. You said it. might just be a slam dunk. But hey, that's just a theory. My first theory of the day. We've still got two more to cover. <laughs> Theory number two, Elizabeth Afton is the real villain. Over in Bookland, things are getting weird. Right, he Which, talked you know, about this in the GT Live video. A rotting flesh suit filled with robot spaghetti is normal is saying a lot. We'll get around to me being impregnated by a video game and giving birth <laughs> to a baby rabbit in the next mini theory. Jesus but first, Christ. I wanted to touch on a security breach theory that I've been banging on for about a month now. The fact mm. that we'll need to redeem Vanny the killer for some sort of good ending in this game. I feel like the evidence for this has been pretty convincing thus far. Her being called a reluctant follower in FNAF VR's audio recordings, the fact that in FNAF AR Clint, we have a series of mode, emails Pat. from a character Sheesh. named Ness, as in Vanessa, Vanny, actively searching for such contradictory terms as help and how to induce compliance in human subjects, indicating glitch traps control I google that all the time. I don't see what's weird about that. I mean... Grasp. There is more, but I've covered all that in much more detail in a previous theory. Suffice it to Which say, I, I did see. Link down below. Go watch it. Security breach. But now we're getting even more evidence from outside of the games, via the most recent Fazbear Frights book, The Cliffs. At this point, we're at book number seven, so you're probably aware at how God. these things work. Three short Scott, stories what are you doing? in various corners of the FNAF universe, followed by an epilogue that continues an ongoing narrative about a creature named the Stitch Wraith, with Scott telling us that details from these stories will give clarity to the lore of the games. So what's new this month? In the latest epilogue, we have a lot of things going on. William Afton, having just spontaneously exploded his body in a previous story, now possesses a Rip. bunch of trash and machine parts. He's basically acting like a vacuum, sucking in everything around him to create, no joke, a giant 15-foot tall trash <laughs> rabbit that the book calls the Afton Amalgamation. And if God. you think that sounds weird, yes. Now, I am not going to sit here and say that we will at some point in the series be forced to fight a giant trash bunny possessed by a serial <laughs> killer. No, the reason I bring Trash Afton up is that what he does in the book seems relevant to our ongoing Vanny theory. Quote again, the problem was that when the trash monster stabbed the detective, it in fact him with the spirit of the horrible man who animated it. For yeah. sure, Afton's spirit would fill the detective with evil, but what if it did more yeah. than that? What if it killed him? Jake had to get the infection out. Afton, at this point in the lore, is just an infection, a virus that needs to be extracted in order to save the host's body, and it can be transferred just by a touch or a small wound. And so yet again, we get even more evidence for innocent people getting Afton infused into their bodies and needing to be cleansed, just like I've been predicting with Vanny this whole time. But yeah. there's another reason that I want to talk about this epilogue. Sure, the main action of the story is focused around our heroic detective teaming up with a Stitch Wraith to use the screaming mask of the puppet <laughs> to destroy the giant Afton trash bunny, which is every bit of fever dream insane as it sounds. But while <laughs> yeah. all of this chaos Scott's is going, going on, there's insane someone the else running around controlling things behind the scenes. Baby. Baby! Throughout the battle, we continuously catch short glimpses of a long-necked female animatronic. This, my friends, Eleanor. is Baby, the long-necked is actually a callback to book one of the series and yeah. her story to be beautiful. Anyway, she fuses up with the Afton amalgamation until they start using the puppet mask against it, at which point she pieces out. And it's only Peace. then, after she leaves, that Afton loses. We get confirmation of this in the final sentences yep. of the story. One final quote, the awful man's spirit wasn't as powerful as it had pretended to be. Afton's spirit was barely hanging on to this reality. Something besides Afton had been controlling the trash rabbit. And whatever you don't it was, say. it was worse. The real threat here wasn't Afton at all, it was Baby. She's the one at the end of the story who escapes to fight another day. She's the one who leaves Damn, the Damn, Afton got and bested by like a six-year-old. Let me explain myself. I think everyone, Scott included based on his Reddit posts, was surprised when Security Breach didn't come out last year. And just like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, when you have an elaborate connected lore, I wouldn't say he was surprised. Up matters a lot, except for one problem. When the ship is already sailing and there are so many companies and moving pieces, and agreements involved, changing launch dates becomes really hard.
hard and potentially really expensive. To my knowledge, the book release dates never really shifted despite the game getting delayed. So could this epilogue be they a preview did not. of what's coming after Security Breach? Think about it. In the Stitch Wraith story, Afton is doing what we expect him to do in Security Breach. He's acting like a virus infecting someone. In this case, right. Vanny, who then needs to be cleansed. But then Fazbear Frights effectively ends Afton's story. It outright calls him weak. He's defeated hmm. by the mask and it sets up Baby to become the ongoing big bad moving forward. What I'm saying is that what if this book was supposed to come after Security Breach had been released? But now, because of the game's delay, we're getting a preview of what it's setting up moving forward. In the trailer for Security hmm. Breach, we get this line. There is more going on here than you realize. Maybe there really are some new tricks up this game's sleeve. But well, what yeah, could Baby be Scott. working on it's moving math. forward? Well, for that, it's time to talk about theory number three. The final one. Modern Theory era. number three, the body snatchers. And now it's time for Matt Pat's final thought. Or final theory, I suppose. Man, those were really cringy for those like first couple episodes. Why did I think that was a good idea? Anyway, I'll keep the this hell? one a bit shorter oh, since that's getting about? long. But basically at this point, we've got ourselves 21 short stories in Fazbear Ooh. Rights. And they cover everything from haunted animals to killer dolls to deadly video games. But there's one consistent theme across a shocking number of these stories, body snatching. In book number one, we have To Be Beautiful where Baby steals a human girl's body piece by piece so she can take over her identity. In book number two, we have Lonely Freddy, where a boy is lured to the back of a Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria and mind-swapped into a Freddy doll so the animatronic AI can go out into the real world posing as him. In book number three, we have Room for One More, where mini Renas shove themselves into a security guard's stomach so they can escape out into the surface world, a very direct parallel to the sister location ending. Book number five has In the Flesh, where... Ugh, fine, I'll talk about this one. A male game designer Dude, after it's so bad events, literally oh my gives god birth to a physical form of glitch trap Scott, what were you, him what were you thinking impregnated stomach huh? of course the game designer what were you on Matt the guy is also a supreme jerk to everyone else throughout the story so thanks a lot Scott very subtle <laughs> you know you felt that level of hostility toward me but again animatronics using humans to escape out into the real world to become real or outright posing as their identity and last but probably most explicitly is the latest story he told me everything in which and I'm gonna tell you what happens in the story and you're not gonna believe me but this is what happens in this story this is a, a... like science club experiments yeah. using a substance called a faz goo the experiment <laughs> involves the students pulling out one of their own teeth and feeding it to the goo which then connects a gooey tendril to their finger we eventually learn that the goo is draining the students organs and bones in order to grow into a perfect clone of I... the original host like, it is Odd. And it like, what really do you feels say? Like it's pushing the limits of what can and can't exist in the FNAF universe. Now, could all of this just be recycling the same ideas for horror stories in a series that now has an enormous number of installments <laughs> and is in constant need Facts. of new content? <laughs> Absolutely. But it is the strongest yeah. recurring theme in the book series, and one that. Are we up to like book eleven or something ridiculous? Concept, seems oh, like God. it could very well be the next logical step for the games. Think of it like prop hunt for FNAF. Who's real and who isn't? You don't know. You gotta figure it out. We've exhausted what one killer can do, so why not an army of killers? Oh Besides, my. animatronics posing as real people is already something that Sister Location opened the door to, so if you have the ability to infect the masses, that's a new direction to take things, I guess. I'm just saying, we've had bad animatronics, looks like we'll have good animatronics, we've had people stuffed inside animatronics, we've had animatronics stuffed inside people. <laughs> now in the books, we're on a regular basis having animatronics turning into people, so why not an army of AIs inhabiting flesh-stolen suits? And if I'm right and baby is indeed filling the villain role for the series moving forward seems like the sort of thing that she'd totally be into skin suits helped her escape sister yeah location. i she guess literally able to be a body double for the protagonist charlie I in the original novel series she's bit. not a killer like her dad I she's a up. copier a girl okay. who's upset about dying young and losing her humanity early so why not try to regain it back while creating an army of body snatchers to come along with you <sighs> but hey that's just a theory Three a game, game yep, yep. Three game theories. Yes, sir. Years, guys. By the way, theorists, if you're worried about some love, you Matt. Yeah, this was a very interesting video. Very, very different from uh, anything he's done. I will say, I enjoyed it. The first one, I don't really know where he's going at with that. I mean, I think if anything, the uh, it, it's just supposed to be a callback. You know, the whole missing beak thing. I mean, it's a staple for Chica's to have their mouths be uh, broken in some way, whether it be with a Chica where her mouth is just like 
open up completely or like i believe hold on let me look it up yeah so if you guys remember the scrap chica from the i believe it was the survival logbook or maybe it was one of the fruity files i can't remember no it was the survival logbook they also had a broken beak their bottom jaw was still there but their top uh jaw beak whatever was gone so unless matt's also saying that that chica's a toy animatronic i don't know I'm a little bit iffy on it. I mean, the endoskeleton, just based off of that, don't really look the same. Also, like, the hair aren't really the same. Like, all chicas have that, those hairs sticking up on the top of their head. I don't know. I'm not a too big a fan of the first theory. Uh, the second and third one, though, I, I do think that they are very likely to be the case. But overall, a very solid theory. I'm excited to see uh, this trash boy in the game if we do get him as, like, a final boss. That'd be so cool. But yeah, that is the brand new game theory. Three new FNAF security breach theories. I kind of hope he does more videos like this in the future. Or at the very least, have them on, like, GT Live or something. I really do enjoy enjoy um watching Matt Pat like explain his thoughts on FNAF and stuff like that. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.